Praise the Lord. From glory to glory. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It's 12 30 now. So by 12 40, please start the clock. 10 minutes. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. Let me read another scripture, another interpretation from the AMPC of the same Proverbs 4.18. Please listen carefully if you don't have that version. It says, but the path of the uncompromisingly just. God is asking somebody, I cannot preach today, I'm going to, go to center on this verse, that if you have been compromising, that today is the day to say no more compromise. Am I speaking to somebody? The parable of the ten virgins, they were all virgins. But what happened is that compromise set in. The things of the world set in. And five took the extra step. We are in the days when we need to be extra passionate and be ready to go the extra mile and pay the price to be after God. Because he's the only one. I'm telling you, we are getting to a time that if not for God, dollar will not be able to help you. Even though the economy of heaven does not rely on dollars. Are you listening to me? We need to stop our compromise. Please help me look at your neighbor. Say from today, receive that grace not to compromise anymore. What do I mean by compromise? Somebody may say, Pastor, it's just a vague word. If you're a worker in this house and you are giving excuses of why you cannot serve faithfully, it is required in stewardship that a servant be found faithful. I have been young. I'm just 57 years old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed or a seed begging for bread. It is impossible. I'm a witting, living witness. We don't have time today to give you testimonies. Tell the neighbor again, say no more compromise. And if you are yet to be a worker and you have been a member of this church for more than six months, stop warming the bench. Pastor, you know them. Look at them now. And tell them, say stop warming the bench. Say stop warming the bench. Amen. Some of you may not like me for what I want to say, but it's okay. You won't see me next week. Hallelujah. Uh, look at the devil and say, do you still like the pastor? Hallelujah. Let's read on. He says, he says the righteous, but the, un, but the path of the uncom uncompromisingly just and righteous is like the light of dawn. When the light of dawn begins to come out, nobody can stop it. From today, everybody at the echo of my voice, either you are listening at home, you will be become unstoppable. It says like the light of the dawn that shines more and more, brighter and clearer. Some of you, I prophesy into your life today, you have been hidden for too long. In that your workplace, promotion, I prophesy promotion to somebody. Promotion that has been eluding you, receive it in the name of Jesus. Because you have been hidden for too long. God is going to leave somebody here from obscurity into promise bed because your light has come. If you are that person, shout hallelujah. But it says brighter and brighter. What does it mean? I'm sure pastor will agree with me. I tell them in my local parish, I said overtaking is allowed. Anybody that wants to suppress you from overtaking is just somebody that hasn't really seen God. I tell them, I said, if I see my spiritual or biological children doing something bigger than I am, soaring higher than I am, it is to my joy. Is it not so? Why will I want to clip their wings? The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord, they shall do what? They shall mount up with wings like what? Like eagles. He said they shall run and they shall not what? They shall walk and not what? They will go and so higher and higher. And that is how the life of a Christian should be. Tell your neighbor, say, meet me at the top. Say, meet me at the top. But before you will overtake me, you too will sweat. Say, before you overtake me, you will sweat. Amen. You know, Christianity, we need to edify. He says, iron, sharpen, iron. We should sharpen ourselves. You know, there's too much competition in the body of Christ. 
Even in this church, I'm telling you, there may be competition. When you see a brother or sister trying when God is doing certain things, you don't know the price that person has paid. You to go to your closet and pay the price. Say, Pastor, when your pastor is talking to you, say, pay the price because God wants to beam his glory upon you. The only thing we need to do is to align under the sun of righteousness. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. And it goes by paying the price. I was sitting here on Friday. I said if you don't spend an hour a day with God. To, to be honest that day is a waste. You have done your own thing. Let's read on. Let's read on. It says and it reaches its full strength and glory. In the perfect day to be prepared. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, in summary, he said, we are all what? With our face as beholding a mirror. What that is telling us, the way I understand it, is that as you search the word daily, as you engage the word of God, as you imbibe and surrender, humble yourself under the spirit of God, something out of scripture, because this scripture is written for you. Jesus Christ, when he got to the temple, he said he found something about him. When you look at that, Luke chapter 4. He found something about him that was written about him. Everybody, this scripture, you can find fulfillment in it. Those promises are for you, not for anybody. So as you begin to engage it, as the Holy Spirit begins to enlighten you, revelation comes, faith comes. It will tell you things to do when you spend time with him. Many of us will run helter skelter every day, wake up very early in the morning, hardly any time with God, go come back in the evening tired and go back to bed. Tell your neighbor, say, that must stop from today. Because the whole creature, they are waiting for who? For you and I. Because we are the only hope for this dark world. Do you know more darkness is coming? Ah, if you are in the spirit, more darkness is coming. But we are not afraid. Because Isaiah 61 to 3, it says, even though gross darkness, it says, but when you allow the Lord to do what? To brood upon you. You allow the Holy Spirit. Look at what happened to Mary in Luke chapter 1. Mary, God said, I want to bath something through you. But this Mary, Mary, you know, said Mary, she said, I have not known a man. And, and what, what did the angel say? The angel said the spirit of God will, what, will overshadow you. When the Holy Spirit overshadows you, it makes the impossible become possible. And, and Mary said, let it be according to what? Thy word. And that is why the word of God, when you engage it and you practice it, you don't compromise anymore. You will see the glory of God. God, I think I have five more minutes. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. We're going to just pray three prayers. But let all eyes be closed. You know, we're in America. And uh, I just want to help somebody here. Please, I don't want you to play games anymore. Today is the day of salvation. And I mean it, please, all eyes be closed. Maybe you are here. As the service was going on, you, was, you, were, you, were, you were examining yourself. That I don't even know what, how God speaks. I don't hear the voice of God. This whole Christianity is like a mirage. I'm not sure. Am I saved? God is knocking at the door of your heart. Maybe you have not really taken time to... To, to have an encounter with him through the Holy Ghost coming to reside in your heart. You, want, you are here. I don't want today to pass you by. You want to say, dear Lord Jesus, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 Please, by your spirit, come and abide in me so that I can be carriers of your glory and your presence so that things will work better for me. Maybe that is why your life has been like a jigsaw puzzle. Lift your hands. I will pray a simple prayer with you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. When the rapture comes, ah, it will be a shame. Those that will be left behind. Maybe you have not had that salvation experience. I know pastor is doing a wonderful job. If you are here, you want to say, pastor, please just pray with me. I'm not sure if I'm born again. Ah, wonderful. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk to God. Say, Father. Say, Father, I come unto you today. As I am, please manifest yourself unto me. 
They encountered the Apostle Paul hard. Go ahead, go ahead. Say, Father, they encountered the Apostle Paul hard on the way to Damascus. Please open my eyes of understanding. We're going to pray three prayers before we close today. Lift your voice and say, Father, please. I thank you for your saving grace. For where I am. That your grace located me. Thank him, thank him. Many a times, how many days do you thank God and say, Father, just for salvation, I want to thank you. Do you know if the Father did not draw you unto himself, you cannot come to him? It's a privilege. Life is a loan. And we're going to give an account on how we live this life on that last day. Go ahead, say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Say, Father, thank you for the gift of salvation. Prayer number two, I want you to lift your voice. Say, Father. Say, Father. Say, Father, whatever dark cloud is obscuring your glory in my life, my family, your church, my community, let such be cleared away right now, right now. Pray, 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 pray that prayer. Say, Father, whatever cloud of darkness may be hovering around me, around my home, around my business, around Livermore. You know, there are principalities in this area. Maybe you don't know about that. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, forces of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Lift your voice and say, Father, because your light has come. Lift your voice, lift your voice and pray, 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 pray. Pray, we have two more minutes, two more minutes to pray. Say, every veil, covering nations. The Bible said, there's a Isaiah, is it 25? Somewhere there. It says, every veil, covering nation. Let such catch fire. Graceland parish we move to glory to glory. Is a city set up on a hill that cannot be hidden. Prophesy concerning Graceland. Say, Father, from today, every cloud, every veil, open the door of faith unto the Gentiles in this area. Lift your voice. There's a reason why God planted this church in this community. And that purpose shall be fulfilled. Lift your voice and say, Father, Graceland Parish, yes, Lord, will be a city set on a hill. And the glory of this church will no longer be hidden in the name of Jesus. Say every gate in this area. Call them. Call them. Say every gate. Whatever you represent. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gate. Be lifted high up. That the king of glory. Begin to invite him. Say king of glory. We invite you in. And finally, I want you to pray. Say father. From today, let my life. Let my light. Let it shine so much. To attract many to you. And to your kingdom. Yeah, yeah, pray, pray, pray. Say, Lord, let my light, as I go to my workplace, as we evangelize, as I carry your presence, your glory, your aura, your magnificence into this society, let people honor you, let them reverence you. Go ahead, just begin to give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Say, Father, I thank you for what you have done today. Go ahead.